So in the last video we talked a little bit about the unit circle. We talked about how you can use the x coordinate to rip off cosine of whatever standard position angle is plotted and the y coordinate is going to give you your answer for sine of the standard position angle. The only issue that we didn't talk about within that video is how do you handle how do you handle a place like we see here in the first quadrant? Like if you're at this spot here, 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 if you're at one of these nice locations on either the x-axis or the y-axis, you're going to know what the coordinates of x and y are. What if you're in one of the quadrants? So usually without a calculator, I know what I require my students to, to know how to do without a calculator as far as the unit circle is concerned in calculus, is I need them to be able to handle 45 degree angles or pi by 4 radian angles along with their multiples and 30 degree angles along with their multiples. So what I'm going to briefly try to review with you here are the ratios for the sides of any 45, 45, 90 right triangle. The proportionality between sides is going to go in a scale of 1 to 1 to square root of 2. And then for a 30, 60, 90 right triangle, it's going to go 1 to 2 to square root of 3. I'll show you how that works. If you look at this 30, 60, 90 triangle that I have right here, the smallest of these three measures is the 1. The smallest of these three sides is the one that sits across from the 30 degree angle. So that would measure one unit. Of these two values, the, the bigger of them is actually the 2. So the 2 is going to be the hypotenuse of my triangle. And then square root of 3 is going to go down here. And you can check and make sure the Pythagorean theorem works. I'm going to refer to this as my base 30, 60, 90 right triangle. Even if you take the SAT, you'll, you'll see these ratios there, and they're needed for certain problems on the SAT. But here's my base triangle. Let's say that I had a new triangle that also was a 30, 60, 90 right triangle, but this triangle on the right is obviously bigger than this triangle on the left. Now let's say that I knew that the hypotenuse of this triangle was six units. What I can do is I can set up a bunch of proportions to go from the small triangle to the big triangle. I can do that because these triangles are similar to each other, right? Any triangle that has a 30, any right triangle that has a 30 degree angle and a 60 degree angle is going to be similar to every other right triangle that has a 30 degree angle and a 60 degree angle. So the corresponding sides are going to be proportional to one another. So what constant of proportionality do you multiply this hypotenuse by to get this? And it should be pretty obvious that it's three. So you can either set up those proportions and do your cross multiplication and solve each one individually, or you can just take this shortcut. My constant of proportionality to get from the small triangle to the big triangle is 3. Therefore, this side is going to triple in measure. This side is also going to triple in measure. And what you can go ahead and check is you can check and see, does the Pythagorean theorem hold again? Well, if you did this squared plus this squared, you are going to see that you're going to get 6 squared as your result. So the 30, 60, 90, 45, 45, 90 ratios are definitely useful when you're evaluating trig functions. The only other thing I want to bring up before we do a few examples here is what we briefly mentioned earlier in this video, and that's that the unit circle is centered at 0, 0, radius 1, but mainly the x coordinate from a spot on the unit circle gives our answer for cosine of the angle. The y coordinate is going to give our answer for sine of the angle. So let's go ahead and take a look at a couple of examples. So let's say we were trying to evaluate cosine of pi by 6. So if we're looking to find cosine of pi by 6, what we're going to want to do is start by locating the standard position angle for pi by 6 on the unit circle. So I've got myself a circle centered at the origin. It's got a radius of one unit. I'm going to go to this conversion real fast. Pi radians is equivalent to 180 degrees. I see that the pi that's within this angle has been divided by 6. To turn this into what I see over here, I have to divide by 6. But because this is an equivalence, I have to divide both sides by 6. So pi by 6 is going to be equivalent to a 30 degree angle. So when I plot a 30 degree angle, I'm going to be sitting in the first quadrant here. And 45 degrees will put me exactly halfway through the first quadrant. I need to plot my angle so that I'm slightly less than halfway through the first quadrant. 
So here would be my pi by 6 radian angle plotted in standard position. Now I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to enlarge this just so I have enough room to do some work with it. But I've got this little triangle right here that I can form. And I know that that triangle is a right triangle because of the angle that you see right here. And I know that this angle is 30 degrees. So it's a 30, 60, 90 right triangle. If I enlarge that 30, 60, 90 right triangle so it's not really drawn to scale anymore as it sits within the circle. But if this is a 30 degree angle or a pi by 6 radian angle and this is a, a 60 degree angle, do I know anything about this triangle? So, so my end result here is I need the x coordinate from, from this point. So the reason why this triangle is useful is because of this. The x coordinate of this point is the distance I come horizontally along the x axis here before I move up into the first quadrant to end in that location. So this distance right here across the bottom of this triangle is really the x coordinate of that point. Do you know anything else about this triangle? Well, it is drawn into a unit circle, and this is a radius of the unit circle. So that is one unit. So what we know is we're dealing with a 30, 60, 90 right triangle, and we know that the hypotenuse has a measure of one unit. If I break out that 30, 60, 90, sequence for my ratio 1 to 2 to square root of 3 of these three values which of them is the largest which one corresponds to the side of the triangle that we currently know which is the hypotenuse it's this guy in the middle now what we did in that brief example going from 130 60 90 triangle to another earlier in this video was we enlarged the triangle the base triangle in this case the base triangle is going to get smaller it's going to get divided by 2. It's got, to, it's got to get cut down by 2 in order for the hypotenuse to equal 1. I've got to have all of those values to end up determining the side lengths on this new triangle. So let's think about this. We've got this the hypotenuse being a 1. So this middle value is already accounted for by the hypotenuse. The smaller of the two legs is the one that sits across from the 30 degree angle. The smaller of the two values is one half. And the larger of the two values for the lengths of the legs is square root of 3 over 2. So my x value is square root of 3 over 2. That is going to be my result for cosine of pi by 6. So try to squeeze one more example in bottom of this page here. Uh, why don't we make this one a bit tougher? Let's go with sine of 5 pi by 4. So if I'm trying to do sine of 5 pi by 4, I'm going to start by trying to locate this angle in standard position on the unit circle. So we'll get ourselves a unit circle, circle radius of 1 centered at the origin. I need to locate an angle. This angle is a bit uglier to locate than the one that we located back here because we don't just have division, we have division and multiplication happening with the pi inside this angle. So I'm going to take a similar approach to what I did in the last one and that's start with my equivalence between radians and degrees. In the last video we did something similar to this. Uh, we took a look at this angle and we said well if we have to both multiply and divide why don't we do the division first to make the number of degrees smaller before we multiply and make it bigger again. So if you take 180 and you divide by 4, you should end up with 45 degrees, but then you have to multiply that by 5 to end up with 5 pi by 4. So what we have to do here is we have to go 45 degrees, right? This fraction is equal to 45 degrees. We have to go that number of degrees five times around the circle. So when I go 45 once, I'm halfway through the first quadrant, a second time, a third time, a fourth time, a fifth time puts me exactly halfway through the third quadrant. So there is my standard position angle. What I'm going to do is I'm going to come up to the x-axis again. I want to be able to draw myself a triangle. 
so that I can figure out what my x and y coordinates are at this location because my answer for sine of 5 pi by 4 is going to be whatever this y coordinate that we see we drop down from the x-axis with whatever that value is. So I'm going to once again enlarge that triangle a little bit just so it's a little easier for me to refer to. So this angle right here, if you paid attention to what we did, we went 45 once, twice, a third time, a fourth time, a fifth time. So this angle right here is a 45 degree angle or a pi by 4 radian angle. Oh, slid off the bottom there. Bring you back up into the screen. Let me see. There we go. So <clears throat> this is a right triangle. It's a 45, 45, 90 right triangle. Once again, I know that the hypotenuse of this triangle is one unit because the hypotenuse is a radius of the circle, right? So if I take my base ratio for 45, 45, 90, it would be 1 to 1 to square root of 2. I need to turn the hypotenuse from this ratio into a 1 by dividing by the appropriate scale factor. Well, the biggest of these three values is the square root of 2. I'm going to divide this by the square root of 2 to turn the hypotenuse from the ratio, the base ratio, into a 1. But to keep everything in proportion, I have to divide all sides by that measure. So you should realize this. Now, I didn't really draw a perfect version of it. This is an isosceles triangle. These two sides are going to measure the same length. They both happen to measure 1 over the square root of 2. And the only thing I'll say about this fraction is pay attention to what your teacher, your professor is asking of you. If it's a multiple choice question, it's going to kind of be dictated to you based on what your options are. But this fraction, 1 over the square root of 2, that is not a simplified fraction because of the root that exists in the denominator. If you were to try to rationalize this by multiplying by 1 in the form of square root of 2 over square root of 2, top times top gives you root 2, bottom times bottom gives you square root of 4, square root of 4 is 2. So that might be the, the more frequently occurring version of this value that you would see or that your teacher or professor is asking you to use. So I'm just going to label this as square root of 2 over 2 uh, and this as square root of 2 over 2. So let's see. I now know that, well, I guess that vertical edge is my y value. So I, I know that sine of pi, 5 pi by 4 is square root of 2 over 2. That is not correct. Hopefully you already realize why. I see this mistake made all the time. We've done a lot of work, right? We've got a big investment in this problem already. Finally got a number for the Y value, but you have to keep in mind where that Y value sits. That Y value, you're in the coordinate plane with the unit circle. This vertical side, this Y value, is dropping you beneath the X axis. So your answer for sine of 5 pi by 4 is not just going to be square root of 2 over 2. It's going to be negative square root of 2 over 2. So you can definitely use this same sort of process with tangent, secant, cosecant, and cotangent. You would just have to convert the problems from the trig ratio that you begin with to the equivalent trigonometric expression that involves sine or cosine. So the unit circle works with sine and cosine. If you're dealing with a 30, 60, 90, a 45, 45, 90, or a multiple of it, you can use these ratios and the little bit of work that we've done right here in order to try to help you figure out your x-coordinates and your y-coordinates, and hence, your trigonometric values.